this is something that we can do. We may never be able to do anything about the carbon footprint in China directly, but this is our fight. This is the one that we can get involved in and make a statement. And I don't want to win. I want to beat them. I want to beat them to the point where they're like, holy smoke. We had no idea that the houndsmen and the hunters, the hunting community was going to rise up to defend science-based and responsible wildlife management at this level. I want them to think about, I want them to go back and look at their bank account and think about how much money they had to spend to lose. This is the Houndsman XP Podcast. Good dog, get that bear. Get that bear in here. The original podcast for the complete houndsman. The podcast that represents our lifestyle of extreme performance. Shoot up there! Yeah! 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 Good boy! Good boy, Ranger! Uniting houndsmen across the globe from east to west, north to south. You know, if you're going to catch a cat or a lion, you know, you have to have teamwork. We take you to the wildest places on earth. Yeah, so how many day how many days a week can you spend in the day? As much as I can to be honest with you. Anytime that I get I'm I'm out there. Join us for every heart pounding adventure on Houndsman XP. I'll tell you like I tell everyone else, I'm gonna hunt whether you're here or not, so you might as well be here. <laughs> Welcome to the first Houndsman XP podcast of 2024. Man, it was a great year in 2023, and I don't want to spend a lot of time recapping 2023. You're always going to be able to go back and listen to all of those episodes that we produce, but exciting stuff is this. Houndsman XP podcast had over 1 million downloads in 2023, thanks to you. People tuning in and listening to this show. 2023 was a great year for Houndsman XP. We were able to reach out and bridge some gaps, make some friends, get some conversations started in the trapping community, in the deer hunting community, with uh, groups like CRWM or the Coloradans for Wildlife Responsible Wildlife Management. Uh, the Colorado Trappers and Predator Hunters Association, all of those state organizations and and hound organizations that we talked to this past year, it was great. The reason I think that is so great is because we've got to figure out a way to come together as a, a community, not of houndsmen, not as bear hunters, not as coon hunters, not as lion hunters, not Southwest dry ground lion dog guys, We've all got to bring this thing together under one umbrella if we're going to stand strong and have a future. That's the most important thing, and that's why we do what we do every week here on the Houndsman XP podcast is to help us have a bright and optimistic future for hunting with these hounds. You know, as I get to travel around the country and experience hound hunting in so many different regions and so many different styles of dogs and uh, different places, different tracking conditions and things like that, you know, I never want for us to lose our individual identities. There's something that's very different about hunting bear 
in the Appalachian Mountains of Virginia versus hunting bear in New Mexico. And we don't want to overlook those unique differences that make us individuals and, and make what we're doing out there worthwhile. The same goes for guys that are competition coon hunters versus a guy that's a hog hunter or a deer hunter with hounds or a rabbit hunter with beagles. You know, everybody's got their own niche and squirrel dog guys are different and they hunt different than, than um, a dry ground lion hunter, obviously. But I really believe this. When I started the Houndsman XP podcast, when we got rolling with this thing, I saw a lot of tribalism within the hound hunting community. And I really wanted to try to break some of that down. I wanted guys and gals out there that were listening to this podcast, that if they were listening to an episode about hunting lions on dry ground, they could pick up a morsel and, and a piece of information. And if they were having a problem with their coon hound in the upper Midwest, it might turn on, you know, get the gears turning and maybe a light bulb would come on or maybe give you an option and, and a way to uh, solve problem for your training, for your breeding programs, whatever you got going on. We're just trying to continually bridge those gaps. You know, since since this podcast started, I've had the unique opportunity to travel around the country and meet houndsmen from from all different types and dog men from the south and and hunt in different places and through that experience i found that we are not that much different the struggles the challenges we face you know dogs have losses in the north woods of wisconsin they have them in the southwest arid deserts of of new mexico guys are constantly trying to break dogs from running trash in Virginia, just like they are in Northwest Montana. Competition coon hunters are looking for accurate tree dogs that are gonna put points on a scorecard for them. And a bobcat hunter in Texas doesn't wanna wade through half a mile of white brush and black brush to get to a slick tree. I say all of that to say this, Instead of us trying to find the places where we're different or things that don't apply to us, our goal has always been to bring this community closer together. When we started the Houndsman XP podcast, there was no voice out there for the Houndsman. Nobody was telling our story. And if they tried, they got it wrong. And it would make, it, make us angry and, and we we're misrepresented. You know, we were told that, that, hunting with hounds wasn't fair chase and and now i'm even seeing the comments on social media change and it's all because of the fact that you have all come together and said hey we can't have this anymore if we're going to have a future we've got to build our own narrative and we've got to tell our own story it is crucial for our survival that we figure out better ways to do this and we continue to try to strive or we can continue to try to strive. That doesn't make sense. We continue to find ways to improve the way we tell our story. And we are getting there. I'm telling you, we are like at the top of the mountain looking down into the promised land there. And I want to give you some encouragement on that. This past year, you guys, all of you houndsmen out there that are listening, have helped me develop relationships in places that were not possible for five years ago. Five years ago, I was not having monthly meetings with organizations like Sportsman's Alliance, you know, talking about issues that are direct threats to our way of life. We're talking about tethering bills. We're talking about breeding bills and just outright attacks on our ability to go out and hunt. And I want to give credit where credit is due on this. And the credit belongs to you. If you tune into this podcast every week and you listen and you give us those numbers for downloads, you increase our ability to have influence. So let me break that down for you. When people tune in and listen to the Houndsman XP podcast, it counts as a download. 
and I tally those downloads or they're kept track of in our, our software behind the scenes stuff that's way too boring to talk about. But I can go to people like Ivan Carter or Jim Shockey and convince them to come on it the Houndsman XP podcast, because they're going to reach this many people. Their brand can reach this many people. People want to hear them. The same goes for the National Deer Association or uh, Coloradans for Responsible Wildlife Management. All of these organizations and people are looking for ways to get their message out. And when you tune in and you say, hey, these guys right here, we're, we're listening to what they have to say. Then people are taking notice of that and tuning in to our show. So I want to tell you, thank you for that, for sure. Not only are the organizations and the individual personalities taking notice, but the brands, the outdoor brands that are um, trying to market to you understand that this is a missed opportunity for them or maybe an opportunity that they've overlooked in the past. They, they didn't realize how strong we were as a community. Ammo companies, firearms companies, out, clothing companies, all of those companies are in business to make money and they want to optimize how much money they can make and and our community collectively has opened their eyes to that. When I go to outdoor trade shows and tell them what's going on, the attitudes are changing. I'm telling you, man, it's it. They people are starting to realize that pe that we drive trucks, and you know we have we have needs and and things that we use on a daily basis that they've got right there in their shop, but they've never thought about how much buying power we actually have. Until we made a pitch to Onyx and showed them how valuable their product was for Houndsman, it took Heath and Seth and I all together, you know, to sit down and, and actually show them how we use Onyx in relation to our other tracking equipment and how valuable it was. And then they were like, wait a second, Man, that's a, that's a whole group that we need to jump in and support because they're going to support us, which is why I'm talking about this. Deer hunting has built a lot of these brands, and that's why deer hunting is represented so well because these brands cannot afford for deer hunting to go away. It's just that simple. It's a supply and demand type thing. It's a, it's a credibility type thing. So they're going to make the moves that they need to make, not only to capitalize on a gr great products or things that, that the deer hunting community wants, but to ensure that deer hunting exists long into the future. They don't want to close their door. They want to stay in business and they will support just causes to keep hunting alive whether it's deer hunting or us dog guys out there getting after it they're going to do what they can to keep us in the field because it's a circle it's all a circle we're out there doing what we do we need their products we spend money with them and in turn they try to keep us in the field hunting because the more we use it the more we're going to need it we're going to wear stuff out we're going to there's going to be new updates in their software. Whatever it is, we have become a cog in the wheel, a, a big wheel that keeps hunting turning. That's why you've constantly heard us say things like, make sure you spend your money with people that support you and support our lifestyle as houndsmen. We all know that, that economies and money and all that stuff drive our culture. And when we make that decision of where we spend our money, we're either giving people who don't have our best interests more power, or we can spend our money with people who have our interest at the forefront and, and boosting their credibility and building their brands. Let me give you an example of that. You can go on Amazon 
and save a dollar on a product and have it shipped right to your house. It's easy. You know, I use Amazon. I think we all use Amazon. But when it comes to the hunting equipment that I need, I want to spend that with somebody like Cajun Lights. I can buy a headlamp on Amazon, or I can buy a Cajun Lights headlamp from L.W. Nixon and know that he's going to put money back into our cause. If there was a an emergency, and there is one, we'll get to that in a minute, but if there was a direct threat to our hunting, I know I could call L.W. and say, hey, we're launching this campaign. Can Cajun Lights kick in some money to help sponsor this thing? He's already committed to me that he would, and he's done it in the past. You can shop on Amazon for camping gear, or you can go to Holler Commerce and spend your money with the guys that go wild, the guys that built a whole social media network for hunters and fishermen and outdoorsmen. So the overall message here is to spend your money with people that support you. I don't know that Amazon cares anything about what we do. They're happy to take our money, but they are not directly supporting us. So in 2024, this is my challenge to you. When you're thinking about making that next purchase, do your homework. Find a company that you know has got your best interests at heart. Spend your money with people that support you. When we come back from this break, we're going to jump right into some great, exciting news about 2024, some moves we're making over here, and how Houndsman XP is improving our network so that we have a stronger voice moving forward. Hey, do you want to know a little tip for shopping? I'm going to give you one right now. I'm going to tell you how you can avoid all of the crowds, all of the big box store, surfing the internet for a bunch of junk that nobody needs or wants. Go to houndsmanxp.hollercommerce.com. It's an online mega store for hunters, fishermen, campers, hikers. I don't care what they're doing. It's right there. They've got all the brands that we use all of the time, like Garmin, Vortex Optics, Lacrosse Boots, Cajun lights. Somebody's looking for a new Garmin watch. We've got that. Go to houndsmanxp.hollercommerce.com. And for a limited time, we've got a discount code for you. Enter HXP10, all capital letters, HXP10 at checkout and get 10% off of hundreds of premium brands. Stock up on all your outdoor needs at houndsmanxp.hollercommerce.com. You know what app I use on my phone more than any other app besides the podcast app to listen to this here podcast? I use Onyx. Onyx Maps is the most comprehensive mapping system for hunters on the market today. I use it all the time. When I was in New Mexico, I was looking at 40,000 acres of ranch that I needed to learn. I flip open Onyx and just start studying, studying the map. When I'm riding trails, I put the tracking app on. It helps me get around in strange country. I could mark water sources, food sources, bear sign, just all kinds of options within Onyx. You need to check out Onyx Maps by going to houndsmanxp.com. Click on the link on our sponsor page. You'll go right to Onyx Maps, and when you check out, enter the code HXP20, and you will get 20% off of your order. Know where you stand with Onyx. Welcome back, everybody. And I just want to roll right into some exciting news for 2024 and for Houndsman XP. We are building our own network. Previously, you've listened to our show on the Sportsman's Empire. Uh, First, it started out of Sportsman's Nation when we first started the show. And since 2018, or 2019, I'm sorry, I got a year ahead of myself there. 
we have added several shows to Houndsman XP. You probably maybe even thought we were our own network. I don't know. But for the, since the inception of Houndsman XP, we have been operating on a network called the Sportsman's Empire. And that's been a good ride. And we've, we've had great success. We're not leaving on any bad terms. Sportsman's Empire has been very good to Houndsman XP and to us as a hound hunting community. They took our show and got it out there to the masses. And uh, it's been good for us. But we decided collectively as a team that we needed a way to even drive our passions more and and build a stronger voice for us as a hound hunting community not to separate ourselves from the rest of the hunting community but to be able to increase our influence and increase our voice so we are going to develop a network that is going to have all the shows that you've always listened to and we're still Heath is still going to produce the journey. Bryce is pumping out a new podcast. He actually rebranded called Simper Doggin, which is competition coon hunting and working dogs. Heath, of course, guys, if you're not listening to Heath on Wednesdays on the journey, I can't stress to you enough how important that is and how valuable that is. Like I've said a few times, and I'm not bragging, I've just been fortunate. I've, I've tried to, I spent my whole life working and, and working towards a goal where, uh, you know, I could, I could spend the last years before I go to the wheelchair, the rocking chair days where I can get out there and hunt with as many people in as many places as possible. And I get to travel all over the country. And I'm not trying to give Heath a big head here at all. This is to let you know what kind of guy you're listening to when you tune in and listen to Heath. Give you advice on dogs, how to train dogs. I'm telling you, Heath Hyatt has got as good a bear dogs, a pack of bear dogs, as I've ever hunted with. Heath isn't just a bear hunter, though. He is a professional dog trainer. He's been to more training, understanding how dogs' nose work, how to alter their behavior, how to bring the most of, uh, uh, in performance dogs to the surface, you know, how to select dogs that are going to work for police work or hunting. I mean, it's, it's, it's dog behavior. He's like a, he's, he's been to doggy psychology classes. So, all those shows that we've always had in the past are still going to be rolling out on the same days. Chad and Seth are still going to produce all mixed up. Chad is a professional animal trainer and a dog junkie. I mean, he's got bird dogs. He's got terriers. He's got hounds. He's got uh, running dogs. He's doing it all. And, and he's such a great trainer. I'm convinced that if a dog had thumbs, he could teach it to, um, to enter his social media post for him, take pictures. He's a falconer. He hog hunts. He does, he, he bear hunts. He hunts upland birds. He, he lion hunts. That guy hunts something just about every day. Plus being a professional trainer, he brings a lot of knowledge to the table for us. I mean, I learned stuff Every time I talk to Chad, every time I talk to Heath, and you can too. Bryce Matthews is capturing the, the coon hunting scene and, and more the eastern dog hunting stuff at a level that, I mean, the guy's enthusiasm is unbelievable. He's creative. He asks a lot of good questions, and he's w always willing to learn from, from people around him. And I think that's what makes his show so unique. It's going to be called Simper Doggin, but it's going to continue with that unique flavor. He just walks into a situation with guys like Jeff Rickliffs and, and just becomes a student and asks those questions that we all want to ask, but he's not ashamed to ask them. And that takes a level of humility and a true desire to up his game, to increase his performance. The Dogmen podcast. Let's talk about that one. 
you know, that's only dropping once a month, but I can't wait every month for that podcast to come out. And it's going to continue to roll out on the new network. Ed and Tanner have tapped into a, a segment of our dog hunting culture that has kind of been out of reach. They're hog hunters. They live in Oklahoma. That culture sees a big difference between dog man and hounds man. You can tune in to all, all the previous episodes and just kind of hear the difference and get a different flavor of how people within that southern culture, you know, they hunt with dogs. I mean, it's great. And they're, they're not even scratching the surface yet. And there's going to be plenty more to come. We're also going to add some new shows. We're going to add some new stuff to the network. And this is kind of an, an attempt to bridge those gaps. You know, Chad, you've already heard us talk about falconry on All Mixed Up. And we're going to be adding a new falconry podcast by Jonathan Munyer that takes a deep dive into falconry. When you talk about hounds, and we've said this on the podcast before, that it's one of the most it's one of the oldest documented forms of hunting that we know of, you know, right behind that, or maybe right there next to him, maybe it's not documented has got to be falconry. So we're, we're going old school with falconry with a modern flavor to it. And we're going to talk about falconry. Jonathan Munier is going to bring you the best content on the, on the podcast interwebs for falconry he travels he goes he hunts he's he's in it he's living it and he's going to bring falconry to the forefront we're also developing some ideas and some shows for just good down home living i mean values and principles that uh, seem to get overlooked hunting techniques that are kind of you know overlooked when you look around our crowd not only within the Houndsman XP team, I mean, Ed, Ed Barnes is, I mean, the guy, the guy's a throwback. He's a, he's a renaissance man. He's a blacksmith. He's a bladesmith. He likes doing stuff old school, old ways. I do too. I've spent a lot of my adult life researching historical long hunters and, and frontiers living and, and, and even use that. I mean, I cook in Dutch ovens. We grow gardens. We cure our own meat. We kill it and grill it. I mean, that's just the way it is. We, we, and, and we are going to talk about that stuff more on podcasts on this new network. We're going to try to talk about things like flintlocks and traditional sidelock muzzleloaders. There's a whole culture out there about that stuff that, that is so interesting and Nobody is really diving into that and talking about the values of, of what those long hunters and those people did uh, back in the 18th century and early 19th century. I mean, a lot of the survival stuff and channels and different things on YouTube that you watch, they're just recreating ancient skills. And the reason we're going with the side lock muzzleloader and traditional archery and trapping and stuff like that is because quite honestly if you look and search for deer hunting podcasts man get ready you're gonna you've got thousands that you can pick from so we want to talk about the road less traveled we want to also not forget where we came from and just bring a, a level of just plain, simple country living back to the forefront with our podcast network. I think it's going to be awesome. And we're going to talk about things that are going to be able to, it's going to add to your ability to live an independent life, a self-sustaining life, a disciplined life, and uh, it's going to lead to freedom. When you don't have to depend on other people for what you need, then there is a level of freedom there that is unparalleled. And that's what we're going to drive. We're going to drill down into all of that stuff. I'm really excited about that part and, and of the podcast that we're, we're developing right now. 
We are also increasing our YouTube presence. Did you know we had a YouTube channel? We do. If you go to YouTube and you you search for Houndsman XP, there's like 400 and some episodes over there. A lot of it is you, you can scroll through and find your favorite podcasts and listen to them on YouTube. But we are creating all kinds of videos over there now. We're doing gear reviews. We're doing gear comparisons. We're going to do training stuff there. Uh, we're doing actual hunting content there. Seth has got a drone. He's been flying that drone over the the wastelands of New Mexico. Looks like he's hunting on Mars and capturing some cool footage of dogs actually in the field hunting and smashing some rock hard hares with his greyhounds. And we're going to expand on that. We are going to double down on YouTube content. I've got some bear hunting stuff coming out from, from this past season. I'm getting ready to uh, travel out west and do some lion hunting. And we're going to be filming it all. Good, the bad, the ugly. It's not all going to be about turn the dogs loose and end with a critter in the tree. Because we all know that doesn't happen. So we want to take you along with us on our journey and tell the real story of what hunting is and how it is to hunt with hounds what it's like to actually hunt with hounds raising puppies i mean you name it we're going to talk about it on this youtube channel coming up in 2024 so what does all this really mean for you the listener well in the past you could go to wherever you get your podcasts and simply search for Houndsman XP podcast and it would pop up and you would automatically get Heath's show and Ed's show and Bryce's show and Seth and and all of them well with a new network we've got we wanted to break up the shows and give them each an individual uh, RSS feed so there's two ways you can still go and search for Houndsman XP podcast and we'll drop all of the shows under the under that or you can simply search if you only want to listen to Heath Hyatt you can search the journey if you want to listen to Bryce Matthews you can you will be able to search Semper Doggin and only get his if you want to listen to Houndsman XP podcast then that's what you type in and you get to listen to all the stuff that we do on this show. The dog men, all of it. So you've got to remember that a podcast search engine or a podcast provider is like a search engine. Treat it like Google. When you go to Apple Podcasts, there's a search bar at the top. You can type in the name of the show or the type of show that you want to listen to. And it'll bring up all kinds of options. So... Once you've done that, once you go in there and you search for those, then you can subscribe to that show and it'll automatically update and you can continue to get that. But there's going to be two different ways. You can search for it by individual show or you'll be able to search with it. Search. I can't even. I'm so excited I can't even talk. You'll be able to search by the network. Either way, you're not going to miss anything. So why change? What's the, what's the reason for this big change? You know, when you're in a crowd, it's a little bit harder to get your message out there. And while the relationship with Sportsman's Empire was, has been great, no complaints, I just felt like we were in a crowd. And, and we weren't able to, to reach out and expand and tell our story in a way that is unique to us in our lifestyle and what we do. And what that ended up doing was it limited our influence in the whole hunting community. When we couldn't have our own platform and our own stage to stand on, then, then we were kind of lost in the sauce with stuck between all these other hunting podcasts and different types of podcasts that are put out there that, that don't directly relate to who we are and what we do. That might sound counterintuitive for me to say that because I've always said we need to bridge gaps. And, and I do believe that. I think we do need to bridge gaps all across the hunting, trapping, fishing community, stand together as one community of outdoorsmen, outdoors people, 
and come together. And I think there's a place for that. I absolutely do. I don't think we should be separatists from the whole hunting community. But when we're focusing on who we are and what we do, then having our own network and and being able to give you the freedom of choice of what you listen to by subscribing to individual shows helps you. And overall, it's going to help us as as houndsmen across the globe to be able to really make a statement and really build who we are and what we do. So we're going to have the podcast. We're going to have our YouTube channel that we're going to be contributing to. Uh, We've got a Patreon community that is really taking off and we're doubling down there and producing more content for our Patreon community. And you can find that by going to Patreon and South searching Houndsman XP. We're dropping additional, uh, many podcasts there every week we call tailgate talks and those are captured there there's video footage there uh there's blog writings there so let me break down patreon for you real quick and and why it's important that that you know what that is so you can make a choice whether you want to support this show it's a it's an opportunity for you to support houndsman xp on the on a monthly basis and we've got four levels of support there there's four dollar, eight dollar, and twelve dollars a month. Okay, and we've we've broken that down in those groups to give everybody an option of of what level they feel comfortable with or what they can afford, whatever. Well, the four dollar a month is access to all the discount codes that we have at um, all kinds of places. So you can check it out on the Patreon page. There's too many for me to even remember. You've got Cajun Lights. You've got uh, Dogs Are Treed. Uh, rough cut company those are just a few that i'm i'm pulling off the top of my head but there's there's more there so you've got all the discount codes at the four dollar level you are included on every monthly drawing that we have we we host a drawing every month and that is for everybody four dollar eight dollar and twelve dollar patrons if you're a patron you're included in the monthly drawing you also receive a $10 gift card that you can use in the Houndsman XP store and get what you want. Put it towards what you want, however you want to use that $10 gift card. So you've got that benefit. Okay, the $8 level. You're going to get a $25 gift card. You're going to have all access to all the discount codes, all the bonus material, everything we're doing over on Patreon. You're going to be included in the monthly drawing. All right, you're going to be you're going to be there. You're also going to be included in the semi-annual drawing, which is worth up to $500. Jacob Campbell just won our semi-annual drawing last month. And so you're going to be included in all the monthly drawings, the semi-annual drawing that's worth up to $500, all the discount codes, and you're going to get a $25 gift card to spend in the Houndsman XP store. You can buy a hat, you can buy a t-shirt, you can buy decals, you can buy all that stuff on us for supporting us on Patreon. At the $12 level, the $12 level is the creme de la creme. You get everything. You get access to all the monthly drawings, the semi-annual drawings, and the annual drawing. The annual drawing has been worth up to $1,000 in the past. We've, and and we're going to continue to expand that. So you've got an opportunity to win. Say, say we're on the day of the year where we're going to do the annual drawing. If you're at the, at the $12 level, you could in theory win three prize packages in that single drawing, the monthly drawing, the semi-annual drawing and the annual drawing. We could all be shipping that stuff at the, to the same place. All right, so you've got those opportunities. You've got all the discount codes. You've also got, we are also going to pay your membership to the Sportsman's Alliance. That's right. We pay your membership to the largest, strongest organization that represents you. If, If you're scrolling through social media, if you're not following them on social media, find them. But you will constantly see where the Sportsman's Alliance is announcing breeder bills, tethering bills, uh, restrictions to bear hunting, restrictions to whatever we're chasing with our hounds. Hound sports are the number one target, and Sportsman's Alliance 
has jumped in with both feet to say that we're here for you, we're going to keep you informed, and we'll go to bat for you. We're going to fight for you. They've got government affairs officials. They've got people in Washington, D.C. They've got people at the state level. And we are going to provide you with that kind of representation in a great organization like Sportsman's Alliance. That package that, that we are providing for you has a $70 value. So let's do some math. Even if, if, if you join us at the $12 level for 12 months, that's $144. We're going to give you a Sportsman's Alliance package at $70. Okay, you're... You, Okay. Well, now I'm out $74. We've already given you almost half of that money back by providing you with a Sportsman's Alliance membership. You're going to have access to all the discount codes so that you can get gear that we use every day and we break every day and we tear up every day and we have to replace all too often. You're going to get those those codes. You're going to get uh, access to all of the drawings. If you hit one monthly drawing, then... It's a wash. You're, you're going to pay for your whole Patreon support with one drawing, if you win one drawing. All of these things, all of this combined, when you join us on Patreon at every level, you are also going to get a year's subscription to Full Cry Magazine. Which leads me into the next part that I'll talk to you about here in a second. But who doesn't want the new Full Cry magazine coming to their mailbox every month. You're going to pay, that's a $36 value for an annual subscription. So if we go back to our math, we're giving you $70. We're giving you $36, $70 in Sportsman's Alliance benefits. We're get, you're getting $36 annual subscription to Full Cry magazine. We're up to $106. You're looking at $36. Eight dollars is that right? Thirty-eight dollars that you're going to have to come up with to support a lifestyle that you want to live anyway. And if you hit one monthly drawing, it's a wash. You're in the black. So that leads me to the last part of this thing, and that is the writing. You know, I mentioned blog space and writing and stuff like that. Well, we, collectively as a team. We are going to be submitting articles to different publications. I'm not going to list them all, but of course, the first one is Full Cry Magazine. We are con we're going to contribute articles and, and things about what's going on in the hound hunting community to Full Cry Magazine. We've already been doing it, but with our own network and our own voice, it gives us a little more time to be able to drill down into that and focus on expanding our voice and and telling your story in the pages of full cry magazine i'm really excited about the network we've got a lot of opportunities and a lot of options to continue to expand our voice our influence letting people know that we're out there you know we've had we've had people on the podcast in the past from the boone and crockett club and sportsman's alliance and hunter nation and and we've showcased what your your state organizations are doing and how they're operating and all those those different important things and we're going to continue to do that into the future along with the top houndsmen and handler interviews and all of that stuff only we're just going to be doing it on a new network that's going to be tailored to us who we are and what we do the last thing that i'll talk about and this goes right hand in hand with the network and our ability to really tell the story of us, the houndsmen. The last thing that I want to touch on is the ballot initiatives in Colorado. If you haven't been paying attention, the animal rights folks have come out of the woodwork and filed petitions for two ballot initiatives in the state of Colorado that will make lion hunting and the hunting of bobcats illegal in that state. They're trying to win, do some window dressing there and, and talk about, well, you know, like ballot initiative 101 as it stands now has a, a provision in it where if 
CPW out there sees fit or a need, there can be a two-week season at the end of December to hunt bobcats and mountain lions. But you can't use electronic calls. You can't trap them. You can't use hounds. But if you see one, if you see one, you can, you, you know, you, you can hunt it. And then once you hunt the mountain lion, then you have to turn in everything except the meat. You better not keep a claw, a tooth, a hair, nothing. You better not give a claw, a tooth, a hair, a skull, a bone, anything, nothing. You can't even give that away to your neighbor. So while Initiative 101 would allow for hunting, it's not going to be effective. It's not going to be a way that's going to be based in science, scientific management of wildlife at all. It's just, it's window dressing so that they can sit back and say, oh, this isn't a hunting ban. We're not, we're not saying ban mountain lion. Look, our, our, our provision here, our, our new language in the law states that uh, we can hunt those for two weeks a year. It's all smoke and mirrors, folks. They're coming after your hunting. They're coming after us as houndsmen. We're the favorite target. And I want to, I'm just going to put it out there why that's happening. We have made ourselves an easy target. We are a very small segment of the hunting community as houndsmen, very small. We are largely, as a group, unorganized. We're, we're, we're not represented. If you were to come after elk hunting, you've got giants like Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation who have organized the elk hunting community together that has influence that can step out and say, no, 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 no. So the anti hunters aren't coming after elk hunting directly. They do it by introducing wolves into the landscape to, to destroy elk populations, destroy the elk, you destroy the elk hunter. So they've got their own challenges, but as houndsmen, we have had zero representation on a large scale. We've got some great state organizations out there. You take uh, the Michigan Bear Hunters Association, the UP Bear Houndsmen, Wisconsin Bear Hunters, um, the the Utah Houndsmen Association, the uh, uh, Federation of Michigan Sporting Dogs that, that Mike Thorman's in. I, I know I butchered that name. My apologies, Mike. But by and large, we have been un unorganized and underrepresented. So that's why I want to talk about 101 initiative 91 and 101 to wrap this thing up. If lion and bobcat hunting is banned in Colorado, that is going to have a major impact on houndsmen in the state of Colorado, direct, direct impact. Might as well put them up for sale, guys. You know, you can say you're out coon hunting and and you're going to you're going to end up in a trick bag. You're going to get tickets, you're going to get all that, you know, they're going to make an example out of you, I guarantee you. That that governor's office out there, Governor Polis, I guarantee you is going to make it a priority. If if you if your name ends up on a court docket for for hunting mountain lions illegally, He's going to make an example out of it. He's going to ensure that that happens. So the best thing to do is to step up and resist it now. The other thing that I want to make clear to everyone, this is going to have major implications across the country. For one thing, I've, I've discussed it like this with people in the past. Let's not focus on the fact that it's mountain lion and bobcat hunting. What is happening is we are making a U-turn, a total departure from science-based wildlife management. There is nothing in this initiative that is good for hunting for the future. You can take out their language of trophy hunting and 
you can just define it as honey. And what I mean by that is they're trying to say that the definition of trophy hunting is to pursue, to harass, to trap, to ensnare, to kill. That's the definition of hunting. Take trophy off of it, and they're outlawing hunting. And then you take out mountain lions and bobcats, which they simply chose for the social value and the social impact in the Disney crowd that they say, oh, we'd love to see a bobcat and a mountain lion, even though they never get out of their Denver suburb on the front range. And those, those lions, they're never going to see them unless they're jumping into their backyard, carrying their dog and their cat off. Then they may change their tune a little bit. But they just chose the big cats because big cats evoke emotions and catch headlines. It's a gateway. It's a gateway to come after hunting on a larger scale. And now, now you might be saying, you might be saying, oh, wait a second, that's Colorado. Colorado's a loony bin state. They have been for a long time. Well, why do you think that the anti-honey movement chose Colorado to build their game plan? They chose it because the ground is ripe. It's, it's, it's fertile ground for them to build a plan to come after hunting on a national scale. If you're sitting in New Mexico and you think that, that what happens in Colorado doesn't affect you, wake up. Utah, Wyoming, have you, I've already seen a lot of you from Wyoming talking about you know, the fact of how many people from California are moving in there. Well, guess what happened in Colorado 30 years ago? Yeah. Same way with for Montana. You know, everybody, I, I've spent a lot of time in Montana. I was out there for, for months one year at work, and, and, and I felt the environment around the governor's race and, and how relieved everybody was for, you know, the politics to change out there. But Montana is seeing some pressure on our predators and different things like that. And, and if you think that the, the neighbor down the road who is a California conservative understands wildlife management in Montana, you're wrong. This absolutely affects every one of us. I don't care if you're turning a coon dog loose in, in Indiana. It's going to affect us. And not to mention the fact that we, as houndsmen, have to come together. It, if it affects my friends in Colorado, it affects me. If it affects my friends in Wisconsin, the wolf problem up there, that affects me. And until we get to that level of investment and coming out of our own little silos and thinking that, that we're the only ones in the world, man, we're going to lose. We're going to lose it all. And that's what drives me and you can tell that i'm amped up you know I, I i talked in the first part of the podcast about network changes and things like that but i will go down on a sinking ship i will i will totally defund houndsman xp to ensure that we don't give up another inch that we don't cave anymore to the disney crowds and the anthropomorphic crazy people in this world that think that they have a right to tell me how I wa manage wildlife, that, that the way that houndsmen are engaging with wildlife and, and we're a big part of that puzzle, and for them to sit there and think that they know more is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. So I'm asking, man, I'm, I'm pleading. There's only one place that you can make a contribution and a hundred percent of that contribution go to the people that are leading the charge in this fight. There's only one place right now. And that is CRWM Coloradans for responsible wildlife management. And their website is save the hunt, Colorado.com. You can go right there and you can, you can, make a donation and a hundred percent of that money goes directly to saving wildlife in Colorado. CRWM is a 501 C four. 
and that allows them to do the political stuff, campaign for political initiatives, things like that. If you're donating your money to a 501c3, then this is where you got to do your homework. If you're if you're donating your money to a 501c3 by law, and in theory, the, the most that they can of your donation that they can contribute to this political fight in Colorado is 20%. So if you send $100 to your favorite 501c3, they can only send 20 of those dollars to fight a political fight. And I'm not trying to tell you not to support your houndsman association in your state they need your support 100 percent. and if you're good with that with that split man do it i don't care where you where you spend the money we're going to need every dollar we can we're we're already we're just in january right now and we're in rehearings and different things like that in colorado on this issue the campaign has not even started. The the part that's expensive, the part where you've got to buy ad space and you've got to you've got to be able to get your message out to soccer moms and and people out there through TV ads and radio ads and and social media campaigns. That stuff is expensive especially in an election year. It's going to be millions of dollars that are going to have to be dropped. So we're looking Dan Dan Gates and I'm working with Dan and a lot of other great organizations that are coming together, we're going to need every dollar that we can get to spend on this thing if we want to help our friends in Colorado. And I've got a lot of them. You know, I don't want to see Josh and Jason Whitaker not be able to turn a hound loose or Justin Anglovich or Cody Lostro or, or Naomi Hirsch. You know, it's too important, guys. We've got to win. At all costs on this thing, we have to win. Because if if they are victorious, if the proponents are victorious in this thing, that is going to be their blueprint and their roadmap to come to your hometown. It's that simple. You know, like I said, I got fired up here at the end, but I, 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 we, we have got to come together on this thing. We can't afford to give them one more inch. And... There are so many things that go into this. When This is something that we can do. We may never be able to do anything about the carbon footprint in China directly. But this is our fight. This is the one that we can get involved in and make a statement. And I don't want to win. I want to beat them. I want to beat them to the point where they're like, holy smoke. We had no idea that the houndsmen and the hunters, the hunting community was going to rise up to defend science-based and responsible wildlife management at this level. I want them to think about, I want them to go back and look at their bank account and think about how much money they had to spend to lose. And that's going to keep them from coming down to a place like New Mexico or Arizona or Montana because Colorado is supposed to be the prime place to try this sort of stuff. It's an easy target, right? Well, if we can beat them here, folks, we can beat them anywhere. And I want to beat them. I don't just want to win by a couple points. I want them to go back and have a big board meeting and think, holy smoke, we wasted a lot of money there. So here is how you get involved. I'll calm down. I'll take a deep breath. And I'll... I'll I'll try to calm down here a little bit. <clears throat> here is how you can get involved. Go to savethehuntcolorado.com, savethehuntcolorado.com, and make a donation. It doesn't matter. They've got everything from five to $1,000 options there. You can customize it. You can do whatever there. Make a donation. Donate a cup of coffee for a month. 16 bucks. What is it? I mean, yeah, 20 bucks. Donate a cup of coffee a week for a month to help defeat animal extremism and bring some common sense back into our culture. You can also go to houndsmanxp.com and purchase one of the join or die hoodies or t-shirts. That is a, 
100% direct fundraiser for this cause. And we, being transparent here, Ed Barnes at Tusker's Magazine, he also runs a print shop called Nova Printing. He does a lot of design work and things like that. He's working with us. So a huge shout out. If you're not subscribing to Tusker's Magazine, even if you're not a hog hunter, know that Ed is in your corner and he's working on this stuff for you as well. He's also been involved in the Oklahoma Dog Dog Hunters Alliance or Dog Federation uh, down there. Their state organization, I should say, before I butcher their name anymore. But um, he's active and he's he's somebody that's working with us. So Ed is printing all of these shirts and shipping them directly from Tahlequah out to you. You place the order on our website, he ships it to you. What? Well, Neither Ed or us can afford to do this for free. So we are taking our cost, okay? We're taking the cost of us to uh, produce these shirts off of that so that we don't go in the red and go belly up. That The anti-hunters would love for us, for any organization, to, to go out of business so they can run roughshod, unimpeded over all our rights. No problem. So we are taking the cost, but 100% of the profits are going to coloradans for responsible wildlife management next week in denver well it's going to be later this week because i'm going to be in denver for the international sportsman's expo in downtown denver on the 12th and the 13th january 12th and 13th i'll be there with cody lostro and shorty gorm and we're going to be representing and working and collaborating with Coloradans for Responsible Wildlife Management to get the word about about what's going on with Initiative 91. You can stop by there. You can get all the information. You can meet Shorty and Cody. And if for some reason you want to meet me, I'll be there. And, and we can chat about hounds. We can tell stories. We can do all that good stuff. But stop by the booth. It's going to be booth 1028. And you're going to get some inf information and some ideas of how you can get involved here. All right. So, <clears throat> guys, I can't stress it enough. It's it's that important that we all we all step up to the plate here. This isn't. We're going to be impacted. We really are. We're going to be impacted directly by this if if the proponents of this these initiatives are successful. But the real casualty is science-based wildlife management. We're allowing the Disney crowd to dictate what we do with our wildlife and how we do it. The most clueless people ever. Nobody's calling me and asking my advice on how to manage nuclear energy in the world. Because I don't know anything about it. And I shouldn't know anything about it. And I shouldn't have a say. But for some reason... The anti-hunting crowd wants to invite people who have no knowledge and understanding of wildlife management to the ballot box to vote on whether or not we should be hunting bobcats and mountain lions, which is in accordance with the North American Model for Wildlife Conservation, and give them a voice. The Disney crowd gets a voice. Oh, it seems like that would make a lot of common sense. Hunting mountain lions is mean. We should outlaw that. Well, the same people are probably voting at your school board meeting to put litter boxes in the classroom. All right? We've got to draw a line in the sand, folks. It's time that we make a stand as houndsmen. I gave you several options to do that. I'm super excited about everything we got coming up and what we got rolling out for 2024. But it's all going to be in f for nothing if we can't win guys thanks for tuning in this is the houndsman xp podcast this is fair chase